Hello everyone. We have been discussing the all encompassing resolution for a human being. And in that process, we discussed about right understanding. Then we discussed about wisdom. And then we discussed about science. In the previous lecture, we talked about science of work and participation in the larger order. And now we'll go to discuss other components of all encompassing resolution, starting from behavior. So we'll be discussing about the other components of all encompassing resolution. So we'll talk about behavior, we'll talk about work and participation. And then we'll also discuss about the vision for undivided society, universal human order and human tradition. Now we have seen that the human desire is continuous happiness, which is the need of the self and is fulfilled by right understanding, right feeling and right thought. And so far we talked about the first three components of resolution. And this is called as talent. This is something to be ensured in the self. Every self has the potential to ensure right understanding, to ensure wisdom and to ensure science. And this is called as talent. Now we'll go to talk about behavior. So we have already discussed about these like behavior, work and participation in UHV2 also. And in the last session on science of behavior, work and participation. However, we recall this with some discussion on the change of emphasis that we are going to have now as compared to the previous course. And what we mean by the change of emphasis is that when we are talking about this in UHV2, that is the previous course, we started from individual, then went on to discuss about family, society, and family existence. But when we have the realization of coexistence, and from there we are looking at this, we have to start from existence and from there, we can come down to nature, society, and family, and lastly, the individual. So in which we too, we had started exploring, right? And finally, we concluded by understanding the existence. And if you look at this course, we already have talked about the existence. We already have talked about the wisdom. And with that clarity, we'll talk about behavior, work, and participation. So if you look at the process of self-evolution, okay, so you can see that there are two different domains and there's a line demarcating the two. So we are trying to ensure this transformation within ourselves. So at the lowest level of consciousness, when we are living with animal consciousness, then largely we are active at the level of selecting and testing. So for the sake of taste, we keep on selecting and we are not able to ensure happiness and continuity. When we are able to develop further, we are able to develop the other activities of the self like desire and thought. So we have the activities of imaging, analyzing and comparing also activated in the self. But still the lower block that is block B2 is unguided and it is enslaved by preconditioning and sensation. So this is the state of animal consciousness when we are living only with the lower activities of the self and imagination is largely enslaved by sensation and preconditioning. But we have a need to know. We have the potential to know, and that's how we are moving forward. So all of us can see that we have the potential to know, we have the need to know. And in that process only, we are trying to transform ourselves, isn't it? So before the transformation takes place, all of us are essentially living in the lower domain, isn't it? Now, when we start self-exploring, when we start self-verifying, then gradually we are able to contemplate on the feelings, the feeling of trust, respect, affection, this is something that we discussed. And this kind of evolution takes place. So we are able to contemplate on the feeling part, we are able to understand the innate harmony. And finally, we are able to realize the whole existence as coexistence. So this is the way we have been transforming. If you look at this particular arrow, right, we have been trying to transform. Now we may be placed somewhere in this journey. So essentially we saw that right understanding is awakening to the activity of contemplation, understanding and realization. And this is ultimately the process. We are trying to awaken to the higher activity of the self. And when we are able to do this, then the right understanding, that is the activation of the upper block B1, now guides the lower block. This is something that we discussed in one lecture also. And you can see that all of us are there in this process. So on the upper side, we can see that this is human consciousness. And on the lower side, you can see that this is animal consciousness. And this is the development that is taking place in the self. This is the desired development that we all are working for. So try to find out 
whether you are able to see this kind of transformation in you. Okay. Even if you look at the lower block, it may be a case that we are largely active at the level of expectation. Now, moving from expectation to thought to desire is also something which enables our development, enables our transformation, isn't it? Now, in this process of self-evolution, if you look at the early step when we were only active in block B2, then we are of course interacting with the human being, with the rest of nature and participating also in the larger order. But you can see that in our behavior, but we can see that in our behavior, we are sometimes happy, sometimes unhappy. You know? And it was mostly the state of unhappiness because the feelings were not clear to us, because the feelings were not stated in us. The activity of contemplation is dormant, not yet active. Similarly, while working, we sometimes enjoy prosperity, but mostly we feel deprived because we are not able to see the need for physical facility clearly. And similarly, we can see that in our participation, sometimes we are contributing to order, but mostly passively or even uh, leading to disorder, right? And then the comparing is unguided, the testing is unguided. So this is the state from which we have started transforming ourselves. Now, gradually, we can see that when contemplation takes place, then we are in a better state because we are able to contemplate upon the values. So the values are guiding the sensation and justice is guiding the comparing on the basis of senses, health and profit. So it is better than the previous state because we are able to contemplate upon the values. But still you can see that there is some role of preconditioning here because the right understanding is not complete. There's some role of sensation also here because the right understanding is not complete. But in behavior, we can see that now it is a kind of better state because mostly we are happy, but still we feel unhappy because the complete order, the complete harmony is not clear to us. In work also, we feel prosperous sometimes, but sometimes we also feel deprived. In participation, we are contributing sometimes to order and sometimes uh, being passive or leading to disorder also. So we can see that some transformation has taken place when we are able to contemplate on the values. So try to see whether this kind of change you can see within yourself, in your behavior has some transformation taken place or not. I'll say that even though the contemplation is not activated, still you can see some change in your behavior because in your imagination also, if you get some clarity, if you are able to analyze harmony, if you are able to analyze relationship, there is still some change you can see. But with contemplation taking place in you, you can see that the change that takes place is continuous. It continues in you. So you can see a marked change in your behavior, in your state of happiness, in your relationship. In your work also, you can see a marked change in your feeling of prosperity because now you are able to see the needs of the body and the self clearly, differently. Uh, but still you get feeling of deprivation sometimes because the understanding is not complete. And similarly, in participation also, you are able to see a mark shift, but uh, that is still not complete. In participation also, you can note if some shift has taken place in you or not. So try to verify this for yourself. Similarly, going further, when the understanding and determination takes place in the self, so still you can see some further progress has taken place in you. You are mostly happy, still sometimes unhappy. You are mostly feeling prosperous, sometimes deprived. And you're mostly contributing to order, but still sometimes feeling passive about it. And here you can see that harmony and justice are guiding the senses, health and profit. Similarly, goal and value are guiding the sensation. Okay. So you can again see a marked shift in your living, in your imagination, in your understanding when this kind of development takes place in you. Now going further, when you are able to realize the coexistence in you, when you are able to understand the harmony in nature completely and also able to contemplate on the participation in larger order completely, then your thought is guided by coexistence also. So the comparing that takes place now is guided by coexistence, harmony and justice. And here also the thought will now be guiding your testing and goal and value would be guiding your sensation. And here you can see that in your behavior, you are able to ensure continuous happiness in you. In work, you are able to ensure prosperity within you all the time. And you are always contributing to the larger order. 
Okay. So this is the evolution that takes place in you. So you can see that this is desirable and we all need to work in this direction. And essentially this is the development of the self. If you look at our whole journey of life, why are we working so much so that we are able to come to this state when we have realized the whole existence as coexistence, when we have understood the whole nature, when we are able to see our participation with every unit in this existence. This is essentially what we need to work for. So if you look at the behavior, essentially behavior is the interaction of human beings. And when we go to interact with the human being, we need to recognize the human human relationship, fulfill the relationship, then evaluate it mutually so that it ensures mutual happiness. And then only it can be called a justice, isn't it? Now, when I have this kind of competence in me, then I'm able to participate in the world family. So when we begin our journey of exploration, of evolution, so we try to ensure harmony in the family, at least my behavior is guided by right feeling so that I am able to contribute to the harmony in the family. And gradually my competence gets built up in such a way that I'm able to see my role in the entire world family. And I'm able to be a pillar for undivided society. I'm able to work for undivided society. So when we have the realization of coexistence and from there we are looking at behavior, we'll see the behavior in the context of undivided society, that is the world family. And from there we'll come down to society and finally family. So when we're discussing in UHV2, we move from family to society and then to nature and then whole existence. But now when we are able to evolve to the level of realization, then we look at our behavior always in terms of undivided society, because we are able to see that my behavior is playing a role. And then I will to see that my behavior is essentially contributing to a state of the society which can be undivided. So I always have the vision for undivided society within me. And with that only I interact with human beings. So we start from the feeling of love for all, each and every unit in nature, and then come down to affection for any particular member of the family. So are you able to see this? the difference that we are trying to mark now. So earlier we tried to understand trust, respect, affection, and then we went on to love. But now when we are able to see the entire existence as coexistence, we always have the feeling of love within us. And with that feeling of love, we ensure our fulfillment in particular relationship in our family. Okay. So this is what we did while talking about feelings in relationship in the last session. That we started with feeling of love and saw that every other feeling is a specific application of the feeling of love. So when the same feeling of love is fulfilled in our mutual relationship in the family, it takes the shape of affection. So we'll see the relationship and feelings in the context of undivided society now, and this makes all the difference. Isn't it? So every time, whenever I participate with the human being, I'm able to see that my role is essentially in terms of undivided society. And the other human being, be it a member of my family or be it a member of some other family. Ultimately, I am related to the other human being at the level of self, and we all are participating in the undivided society. So that kind of clarity is there in me with the realization of coexistence. So now when I'm seeing the relationship with one individual, we can't violate relationship with any other individual. Whereas this can happen when we are starting from the individual, this we can see in our day-to-day -day behavior. So sometimes it so happens though that when you go to mend your behavior, okay, and you start working on your feeling. So you try to ensure fulfilling relationship with a few people within the family or within the organization. And gradually you are able to expand your feeling to other human beings. But when we are able to have the feeling of love within us all the time, every moment, then with the feeling of love, we interact with human beings. So you can see how the evolution has taken place. Earlier, while fulfilling one relationship, might be that you had to violate some other relationship because the relationship was not clear to you. But with the feeling of love, when I'm able to see my relationship with every human being, every other human being becomes only a subset of that. Are you able to see this kind of change? Now we are having the feeling of love all the time. And as a subset of that fulfillment of love, we are ensuring affection with few people. Earlier, we we're trying to ensure affection with few people, and we were not clear about the feeling of love. So this kind of shift has taken place. 
so going over all the feelings okay we already have discussed about this i'll not revisit this but we saw that the relationship is there and the relationship is there between one self and the other self and with that we are able to have this clarity and acceptance for the other self continuously unconditionally we are also able to ensure the feelings in the relationship in one self or the other self and we are also able to see that there are nine feelings which are very much definite and we are able to ensure these feelings within us and that is there in us unconditionally continuously and then we are naturally able to fulfill the relationship evaluate whether it is leading to mutual happiness or not and then we are expressing the right feeling living with responsibility unperturbed by the behavior of the other this is very important when we have the right feeling and sure then we are not perturbed by the behavior of the other so what are the feelings which are naturally acceptable right from trust to love we talked about these feelings and then with this we are able to ensure justice in our relationship so that we are able to ensure justice from family to the world family now with this clarity we are always able to see our role in the undivided society and with that we fulfill our particular relationships and then we are able to see that we participate in the society to ensure fearlessness so having discussed about behavior now we'll talk about work we also talked about work in the previous lecture we talked about the science of work so recognition of human and rest of nature relationship its fulfillment and evaluation leading to mutual enrichment this is what essentially work means so our work is successful when we are able to ensure mutual enrichment so when we have the realization of coexistence and from there we are looking at work we'll see the work in the context of nature as a whole and from there we'll come down to work with the nature in the village and finally work with the nature in and around the family and now i am seeing work with the nature in and around the family so i cannot violate my responsibility of mutual fulfillment towards the entire nature so earlier when we started paying attention to work we try to ensure mutual enrichment in our interactions with the rest of nature and we started from our family and then we went to surroundings and so on but now when we are able to have the vision for undivided society and universal human order from there we look at our role in the nature and the work is a very natural outcome of that so whenever i am interacting with the rest of nature i am able to see that my work is participating towards the harmony in the entire nature okay and this participation in the nature is a very small subset of my complete role in the entire nature but if i do not have the realization of coexistence i might violate the nature which is not in the immediate vicinity but if i do not have the realization of coexistence then i might violate the nature which is not there in the vicinity for example it may be the case that to make a house of your own okay you go and work on the rest of nature so you bring some material from the nature build your house but in the process you start creating pollution you start cutting the trees without planting the trees so on one end you are able to work you are able to fulfill the need of the body but on the other end you are depleting the nature you are polluting the nature but when i have the understanding of harmony in the nature in completeness when i am looking with coexistence then while making my house also i will ensure that it does not violate the harmony in the nature in any order isn't it so i have the complete vision for my participation in the entire nature and with that i am interacting with particular units in the nature this kind of shift takes place with right understanding in completeness so does it make sense for you are you able to see in behavior as well as work we earlier started to interact with particular human beings and we try to fulfill our relationship through mutual happiness or mutual enrichment but we did not have the clarity of undivided society we did not have the clarity about the harmony in nature but now when we are able to realize the coexistence we are able to understand the harmony in nature in completeness we are able to contemplate upon the feelings in relationship in completeness so from there we are able to see our behavior as a role in this undivided society our work as a role in this harmony in the nature so this kind of shift takes place in us so similarly with work we can see that work is the recognition of human rest of nature relationship its fulfillment and evaluation leading to mutual enrichment so we have already talked about the science of work now when we started discussing about work in the previous course we started looking at our interaction with the rest of nature but now with the clarity of coexistence harmony and relationship 
when we look at work, we are able to look at work as our role in ensuring harmony in the nature. So with that complete vision of harmony in the nature, we are able to interact with particular units in the nature. So when you have the realization of coexistence and from there we are looking at work, we see the work in the context of nature as a whole. And from there we come down to working in the village with nature or finally work with nature in and around the family and in our day-to-day -day interactions. So whenever we are interacting with the rest of nature, okay, whether we are farming in the field or doing some work with wood or doing some other chore in the house, we are able to see that ultimately we are participating in the nature as a whole. So that kind of shift is there. And I think you can now see this marked shift in your imagination. So we started by observing our interaction with individual units in the nature. But now with the clarity of harmony in the nature as a whole, we are able to see our interaction with nature as a role in the entire harmony in the nature. And now when I'm seeing work with the nature in and around the family, I cannot violate my relationship of mutual fulfillment towards the entire nature. But if I do not have the realization of coexistence, I violate the nature, which is not in the immediate vicinity. So you can see that presently we are trying to mend our work. We are trying to work in such a way that we have a better output from the nature. But in that process, we might be depleting the nature, we might be polluting the nature. So earlier, when you start looking at your work, you are mostly looking at your fulfillment of needs of the body within the family. Right. Then you go to observe your role in the vicinity. But finally, when we have this kind of vision in us, then we are able to see every task that we take up with the rest of nature as a small component of your entire role in the nature. Are you able to see this? Are you able to see this kind of shift that takes place in you? So we talked about the two things, prosperity of human being and preservation of the rest of nature. So the following is done with the perspective of work in the context of nature as a whole. So when you go to ensure prosperity, we are able to identify the required physical facility with required quantity. We are able to produce by way of labor and we use cyclic and mutually enriching processes. We right utilize the physical facility and we use exchange and story for mutual fulfillment. Now while doing this, we are able to preserve the rest of nature, enrich the nature, protect the nature and rightly utilize the rest of nature. So you can see, like when we started in understanding your interaction with the nature, it started from an individual uh, work. But now you are able to see your work as a small subset of your whole role in the entire harmony in the nature. I hope that is clear. Try to mark it out for yourself. For example, let's say you have to make a house for yourself to protect your body. Okay. Now, when you go to a house, your concern is not merely to make a good house of your own. You also see that if you are using the bricks from where the bricks are coming, if you are using mortar from where the mortar is coming, what kind of state is going to be there in the nature around if your house is built up? So presently, if you see in the cities, we are having so many houses being constructed every day. So many people living in the cities, right? And mostly people are concerned with their own welfare. Most people are concerned about their own needs. Seldom they are looking at the nature as a whole. For example, if you make such big towers and such big buildings and use air conditioning all the time, what is happening to the nature around? There is going to be ozone layer depletion. There is going to be global warming. But seldom we are concerned about this. Why is this? Because we are not able to have the vision of harmony in the nature. And that's how when we fulfill our need for physical facility, we deplete the nature, we pollute the nature. Now with this, we'll talk about participation in the larger order. So we talked about the human goal. This was one formulation that we talked about. And we talked about the participation in the five dimensions of universal human order, from family order to the world family order, and going up to universal human order. And we talked about these five dimensions of the society. And you could see that how there's a scope for expansion of harmony from family to the world family. Right? We are able to ensure our orderliness in the family going up to the world family. So now with this clarity of coexistence, when I go to ensure order in my family, okay, I'm able to see that this family is a unit of this world family. So while ensuring family order, I will not be violating the world family order, isn't it? 
So to fulfill the needs of the family, I will not be employing any corrupt practice. Presently, we can see that while fulfilling the needs of the family, people are ready to exploit the society. People are ready to exploit the nature. Why is that? Because people do not have the vision for an undivided society and universal human order. So when we have this vision, we have this clarity, then we look at our family as a unit of world family. Right? So whenever you plan something for the family, we have the vision for the world family within us. And with that, we are able to look at our role in the family as a small unit, as a small subset of our role in the world family. So when we have the realization of coexistence, and with that, when we are participating in the family order, it will be in the context of participation in the five dimensions of universal human order for fulfilling the four goals. For example, when I'm teaching in a university or college, then I want to see that my role is not limited to just imparting some skills to the students. Essentially, these students are a part of this world family. And I'm delivering this content so that the students can be human beings with the right understanding and right feeling, and they are able to contribute to the universal human order. Similarly, if there's a person taking care of health of the people in the society, his or her role will not be limited to only prescribing the medicines but rather to see that every human being is healthy. Now with this, we can talk about undivided society, universal human order and human tradition. So these are the three components that we are going to discuss now. So you'll see that the first three, right, understanding, wisdom and science make the talent of a human being. And when it comes to expression in our interaction outside, in terms of behavior, work and participation, it becomes our personality. So this is the talent part and this is the personality. Now with that, we are able to participate in undivided society and universal human order. So undivided human society means it is the outcome of living with justice in harmony with the human being from family to the world family. So as we discussed earlier, now our behavior with any particular human being is based on our vision for undivided society. Right. So as we keep on working within ourselves, to contemplate on the relationship, we are able to naturally accept the whole world as a family and our behavior, our interaction is in terms of undivided society and we are able to see the whole world as a family. So it is not going to be the case that to nurture my family, I will exploit the rest of the world. It's not possible because I'm able to see my family as a small unit of this world family. So this kind of competence is there in my living when I'm participating in the undivided society. So we already talked about the values in relationship and now we're able to participate in the undivided society. So we talked about the science of behavior first and we talked about behavior and now we are able to see that we are expressing our feelings through behavior for an undivided society and thus there is fearlessness in the society. And this competence will live with mutual fulfillment goes from family to the world family. Next, talking about universal human order. So all the five dimensions are there in the society to fulfill the human goal. And outcome of living in harmony in nature, which includes the harm, which includes the human being as well as the rest of nature. And then we are able to participate in the family order, going up to the world family order. So as I mentioned earlier, when I go to ensure order in my family, I'm able to see that this is a part of my world family. And with this vision, I'm able to participate in the family order. Okay. So in this lecture, you can see that you are not introducing some fresh content, but the vision has taken a shift. Okay. And in place of looking at individual interactions, we are able to see the whole world as a family. And then we are looking at our interaction in terms of this vision for undivided society and universal human order. So with this clarity of human goal and the clarity of five dimensions, we participate in the society so that we are able to participate in the whole world as a family and our role in the society is now in terms of universal human order. And when you say universal human order, it does not include only human beings, it also includes birds, animals, soil, air, water, plants, trees, everything. Isn't it? So are you able to see this kind of shift in your own vision as the course is progressing? Are you able to see that the whole world is your family. Are you able to see that 
you are a small unit in the whole nature and you have a role to play in the nature now with this we get the clarity about human tradition in which the human goal is fulfilled from one generation to another so the undivided human society and universal human order getting fulfilled from generation to generation makes the human tradition so one of the sequence in which human tradition can be materialized is the work for human education then we are able to ensure human conduct with that we are able to ensure human constitution and then we are able to ensure human order and this guides the net next generation and then we have the human tradition another kind of sequence could be like we work for human education which ensures human sanstha with that we are able to ensure human conduct and thus there is human order so there could be multiple formulations to denote what human tradition would be like so these are two formulations which are there in front of you so the clarity that you get with right understanding is that now when you are working for yourself or you are working for your next generation you are able to see that your generation or the next generation is a part of the human tradition so now when you go to fulfill your needs then you look at the needs being fulfilled for the next generation also for example presently we have exploited the earth so much we have extracted so much of petroleum we have extracted so much of coal mineral reserves and we are not bothered how the next generation will be fulfilling its goal isn't it largely we are concerned about our own generation about our own personal needs but with the clarity of human tradition when you go to fulfill any need of your own you are able to see whether this process could be followed across the generations this could be something which enables a sustainable living for every generation to come now just try to think do we ever think in terms of the tradition people have started saying that this earth is not going to be livable maybe 100 years hence because already there is so much of scarcity of resources and there is a large possibility of wars taking place deadly wars taking place so are we really bothered about the next generation we have polluted the air water soil to that extent that maybe the next generation will have to struggle to survive on this planet and who is responsible for that so when we have the resolution in us we are able to see that whatever interaction we are doing either with human being or the rest of nature it is in terms of human tradition on this planet so that every generation to come here is able to fulfill the needs needs of the self as well as the body in a sustainable way so one formulation is placed here so the human education getting ensured so one formulation for human tradition could be that we are able to ensure human education in the society and that would mean that an education is there in place which ensures the development of the competence to live with different human conduct so that people are able to awaken to the activities of contemplation understanding and realization when that happens then it is able to ensure human conduct in general the conduct that ensures continuity of mutual happiness and mutual prosperity when that happens then people are able to frame a constitution right and constitution is the nature of society of people living together in a relationship of mutual fulfillment so very naturally when people are having the right understanding they are able to live rightly they are able to frame the constitution which sustains this kind of living which promotes this kind of living isn't it and then we have an order in the society in which the human goal is realized and then this goes to the next generation people who are able to enable this kind of living people who are able to live in this kind of order become educators for the next generation and then this becomes a human tradition generation by generation but you can see that the entry point is education ultimately you have to start from education and that's why so much of emphasis is being given for ensuring value education value based education because education is the entry point we are able to see that in the entire existence it is the self of the human being that has to develop and it can develop only through education isn't it so we can say that the education is the foundation of a harmonious society if you work for education rightly then you are able to transform the society generation by generation if you are not able to work on education then it may get deteriorated 
So to ensure human tradition, we of course have to work on human education, and that is the entry point for any harmonious, any human society. I hope you are able to see this. I hope you are able to see your role in this kind of human tradition, right? Unless you are able to awaken yourself to the activities of contemplation, understanding, and realization, your conduct is not going to be definite. If your conduct is not definite, the constitution that you would enable will not be human, and there is not going to be order in the society. And we can see today there is so much of struggle, war. People are struggling for survival. Why is that so? Because we are not able to work in education rightly. We are not able to see that values hold a higher priority than skills in education. So with that, we have an assignment today. So observe in your behavior whether you are able to ensure the feeling of love. Okay. So you can observe that the feeling of love is at the base, and from there you are coming down to the affection for a particular individual or otherwise. So with the feeling of love. we are able to ensure justice in every relationship and the process of ensuring justice in our family or in our surrounding or with our surrounding people is only a small subset of that feeling of love for the entire humanity now similarly you can observe in your work that mutual fulfillment with the entire nature is at the base and from there you are coming down to mutual fulfillment with the natural resources you are working with or otherwise and similarly in your participation you can see that participation in the universal human order is there at the base and from there you are coming down to participation in the family order or otherwise so this is something for you to observe so today we have concluded our discussion on resolution we started talking about behavior then we went on to discuss about work then participation then undivided society universal human order and finally one tradition and you will see that in a single lecture we have covered so many things why is that so because what we are trying to conclude through this lecture is that when we have the all encompassing resolution in us when we have the clarity about coexistence clarity about harmony clarity about participation so our small interactions in behavior work right are basically in terms of ensuring undivided society universal human order and human tradition so this kind of competence is possible in every human being isn't it and this is living with human consciousness so with this lecture we have concluded our discussion of the complete content now in the next two lectures we sum up all that we have discussed so far so that was all for today do your assignment observe that your small interactions are a subset of your participation in the entire humanity observe that your small interactions with human being or the rest of nature are in terms of human tradition on this planet thank you all so try to explore on this issue and try to see whether we are able to do the right thing to ensure prosperity in the human being whether we have been able to identify our requirement of physical facility whether we have the mindset of production by labor whether we are using cyclic and mutually enriching processes and this will help you uh, find out different ways of ensuring all this because in the current education system we are not able to more or less develop this kind of mindset and not only this we will see that the issue of ensuring justice with our co-workers is also something to be questioned because most of our systems of management are focused on maximization of profit and they are willing to work with the principles of opposition in place of relationship so what holds mostly uh, what is generally adapted as a practice is to exploit the people let the opposition grow uh, rather than fulfilling the relationship so that there is mutual happiness in the organization and that's why we can see that there is some kind of struggle always going on in the production systems in the among the people who are working together and there are labor strikes and there are strife to overcome such issues many many times the production units get shut down also because of the internal feuds and strife so we have to see whether we are able to ensure justice with our co-workers or not whether our production systems have been designed in that manner or not similarly talking about right utilization this is also a major issue because 
our education currently is not focused on developing this kind of mindset whether people have the aptitude and where people have the mindset where people are thinking in terms of ensuring right utilization you see that there is no content dealing with right utilization of the physical facility rather consumption to the extent of indulgence is implicitly promoted and the same is seen at the level of society where consumption is defined as status and is praised for so if you look at the advertisements you will see that there are so many advertisements saying that whatever you are using is not good for use now and you can sell them off and purchase new ones you can sell off your old car you can sell off your house you can sell off your property you can sell off your sofa and go and get a new, new one they might still be fit for you but many times you are promoted to sell them off or remove them and then get a new one it is also being said that in many countries a large share of physical facilities that we have accumulated is dumped in 6 months and people go for newer ones just try to make out for yourself when how many times you throw your clothes when they are torn and how many times you throw your clothes when they are out of fashion so if you are throwing your clothes because simply they are out of fashion it means you have not rightly utilized them isn't it similarly talking about exchange and storage so today you'll see that the exchange and storage is not basically meant for mutual fulfillment but most of the time the motivation here is profit maximization or even exploitation so like there could be three modes of exchange one could be give and give the other could be give and take and the third could be take and take so when we have a mindset of take and take so we try to take the maximum from the other and the other also tries to take maximum from us and then they just struggle isn't it in that exchange so it is not acceptable naturally when you go for take and give so you try to take the maximum from the other and the other is willing to give but we see that this is not sustainable because the other just can't keep on giving you and you are always trying to take as much as possible from the other but when we have the mindset of give and give then this is certainly something which is sustainable so we have to see how we can make our exchange systems mutually fulfilling you see that if our exchange systems are mutually fulfilling then that exchange system remains sustainable otherwise because of exploitation after some time again there is some struggle and the exchange system starts getting questioned similarly in the case of storage you will see that in place of storing what is meant for right utilization people start hoarding okay in the name of storage and many times they also hoard so that they are able to create shortage and they are able to earn more and more profit and they are able to make more and more profit isn't it even if there is enough food grain for the society people will hoard it and create some kind of shortage in the market so that people will start purchasing them at higher prices so that the people who are hoarding them are able to make more profits and this kind of tendency is there so we have to see whether we have been able to develop such signs of work and participation which could be mutually fulfilling isn't it now talking about the preservation of nature one aspect is enrichment enrichment means to add to the quantity so we have to see whether enrichment is at our focus or something else so in the present day production process if you see we are willing to explore the natural resources used in the process even the natural environment for example when you have to grow food grains or vegetables or fruits many times we go for inorganic farming and we are willing to produce such things at the cost of fertility and quality of the soil so are we really adding to the quality of soil or we are depleting the quality of soil talking about protection protection seems to be of concern only to the extent that it is very necessary for the immediate production for example putting fertilizer in the soil to get the immediate production and many times it is even at the cost of other qualities of the soil so there is a typical example of bhatinda district in punjab where many people are suffering from cancer and the reason being that people have put in so much of insecticide pesticide chemical fertilizers in their crop production that people who consume them start suffering from such deadly diseases in fact there is a train that goes from punjab to rajasthan and that train is named as cancer train 
because mostly the people traveling that train are cancer patients so we have to see whether we have been able to protect our water bodies whether we have been able to protect the quality of soil the quality of air the forests whether we are able to protect the forest many times we deforest the soil the land so that we can make them cultivable and then we use chemicals there to cultivate and on one hand we have cut down the trees to the extent that the carbon dioxide carbon monoxide noxes they are not absorbed by the environment to the extent it is required on the other hand we are adding such chemicals in the environment which can be further uh, injurious to the health of the people and again talking about right utilization so as we discussed in the case of physical facility similarly we have to see whether we are able to rightly utilize the resources in nature isn't it so if we have the tendency for over consumption so certainly that is not going to be done so we have consumed so much of mineral resources right so much of plants so we'll see that we have not been able to rightly utilize the air water soil because of which they have got polluted the water bodies are drying up the water table is going down in many parts of the country there are some parts of the country where drinking water is no longer available there are certain countries where the drinking water has completely got depleted and even we we'll see that there are so many countries where the drinking water is not available because the water bodies have been exploited to that extent so these are really some issues of concern and we have to take care of that so try to see try to see in your own surrounding whether this is being done or not and what will be the solution towards it how can we enrich the natural resources how can we protect the natural resources how can we right to utilize the natural resources give a thought to this so we'll see that there are two problems which are prevalent one is resource depletion and the other is pollution so resource depletion means that the resources are used at a rate which is faster than the rate at which they can be produced again in the nature and that's how they are getting depleted for example the petroleum we have been using petroleum at such a fast pace that after some time the petroleum is not going to be available similarly coal similarly so many resources we are using and because of that the resources are getting depleted then there is another problem of pollution and that means that the product is such that either it does not return to the cycle in nature or it is produced at a rate that is faster than the rate at which it can return to the cycle in nature so for example if we enter into a cyclic processes then of course they are not going to return to the nature and if you keep on producing certain things which are not consumed at that same rate in the nature then of course that will create pollution so we have air pollution water pollution soil pollution plastic pollution isn't it because they are not consumed at the same rate at which we are producing so it can be seen that both these problems are due to involvement of processes which is either not cyclic or not mutually enriching and these problems can be solved if we start using the processes which are cyclic and mutually enriching so we need to evolve such processes which are cyclic and mutually enriching in fact people have started talking about sustainability they are talking about circular economy they are talking about renewable energy renewable materials so at some point we have to be really serious about it and we have to remove the non renewable resource we have to get ourselves free from the consumption of such resources so again try to see whether we are facing this problem today or not try to make out in your own area what was the level of pollution 20 years back and what is the level of pollution now and the pace at which the pollution is going up what is going to happen in the next 20 years so we try to look at the depletion of resources in your own area the mineral resources the petroleum resources isn't it are they getting depleted or not petroleum is not available in the area well and good try to look into other resources which are available and find out whether they are getting depleted or not so these problems can be solved if we start using the process which is cyclic and mutually enriching and this is something that we have to really think about next comes science of participation so when you go to study the participation in the larger order so you can see that there are five dimensions of human order in the society which help us fulfill the human goal and then we have to see how we can participate in those five dimensions so that we are able to ensure an undivided society and universal human order so we have to ensure development of talent in all necessary dimensions in same or different persons 
like engineering, farming, medicine, plumbing, and so on, so that every individual is able to participate in a mutually fulfilling manner in each of the five dimensions of human order. So whether our participation in each of these orders, whether our participation in each of these professions is mutually fulfilling or not, we have to make out. Many times we try to opt for such professions where we do not have to do physical labor, where we can just dictate terms on others. We can, uh, we can avoid working with our hands. And these all faulty practices ultimately create disorder in the society. So we have to look into such practices so that we are able to participate in undivided society and universal human order by participating into any of these dimensions. So we have talked about the human goal and these are the five dimensions to fulfill the human goal. And we can see how they are mapped with each other. So education sanskar fulfills the need for right understanding, right feeling. Health sanyam as well as production work fulfill the need for prosperity in the family and coexistence in the nature and existence. Justice and Suraksha, so justice is related to fearlessness and Suraksha, that is preservation, is related to coexistence. And when it comes to exchange and storage, so by ensuring proper exchange and storage, we are able to ensure prosperity in every family. And we are able to ensure fearlessness, that is trust in the society also. So try to relate these dimensions to the four goals and try to see whether these five dimensions are able to fulfill the four goals or not. When we are able to have these four goals being fulfilled in the society and the five dimensions being properly developed in the society, then we can have the society organized in 10 steps from family to the world family. So let's say in a family, there are 10 people in three generations and the family cluster will have 10 square people. The village would have 10 cube people and going like this at the level of world family in 10 steps, you can accommodate 10 to the power 10 people. So this kind of possibility is there. We can have a clear understanding of the universal human order. We can have a clear understanding of how this whole world can become a family. But for that, again, we have to start from here. We have to start working from right understanding and right feeling. And for that, we have to start from education. If the education is strengthened, then people who graduate from institutes, they will have the mindset of right utilization. They will have the mindset of uh, relationship and they will have the mindset of being complementary to the other for development of each other and then the whole world can become a family in this manner now when you look at the human participation in the orders of nature so some details can be shared here so to understand the inherent harmony in nature and to live accordingly we can facilitate a conducive environment for the activity or at least not violate it of all the orders this is something that we had discussed earlier to facilitate the innateness or at least not violate it of all the orders. So with each of these orders, we can make a definite program. So with the physical order, our participation would be to facilitate the existence of the units in the physical order by ensuring conducive environment and maintaining and or ensuring the constitution. For example, the constitution of earth, we have to maintain, we have to ensure that the constitution of earth is sustained. So we can have a look at our participation with different orders. And this is something that we had discussed earlier with the physical order, with the bio order, with the animal order, and with the human order. So in the physical order, we need to facilitate the existence by ensuring conducive environment and maintaining or ensuring the proper constitution. For example, the constitution of earth. So the earth has its own constitution. And if we do not sustain that constitution, ultimately our survival is going to be at risk. Similarly, in the bio order, we have to ensure proper growth by ensuring conducive environment and maintaining or ensuring the seed. For example, seed of rice, we have taken examples also here while discussing about this thing that there is some area in our country, India, where there we had not less than 12,000 varieties of rice a few hundred years back. But now very few varieties of rice are to be found. And we'll see that the different varieties of rice had their own benefit according to the change of season in ensuring health. And if you're not able to ensure this, then ultimately we have to depend on medicines for our health. Similarly, with the animal order, we can facilitate the care of the body by ensuring the physical facility environment and uh, such things which are needed for the existence and growth of the body. And when it comes to the self, then we have to ensure its will to live. We have to maintain and ensure its breed. For example, breed of cow. So ensuring the will to live would mean that we are not killing the animals. 
and maintaining or ensuring the breed would mean that we are able to maintain the breeds of animals for example lion tiger cow okay uh, it is said that there were several varieties of cow earlier to be found but in the slaughterhouses the cows have been slaughtered to such an extent that some of the breeds are not to be found today so these all faulty practices need to be evaluated similarly with the human order we have to facilitate care of the body by ensuring physical facility environment and uh, such things which are needed for the existence and growth of the body and it's not only the will to live that has to be ensured the will to live with continuous happiness has to be ensured and for that we have to work on education and sanskar so this is our participation with the human order so through education we are able to develop the self we are able to help the self get awakened to the activities of contemplation understanding and realization so that there is a definite participation so this is possible by participating in developing or maintaining undivided society and universal human order so for the human being we have to work in this manner and as we have been exploring that humans are different from animals our will is not only to live our will is to live with continuous happiness and for that we need right understanding and right feeling and for that we need the right education isn't it and then only we are able to develop our competence in such a way that we are able to ensure an undivided society and universal human order so i hope you are able to recollect this we have discussed about this in previous chapters so try to relate that content of discussion to the content that we are sharing here we also have discussed about the six values perseverance bravery generosity kindness beneficence and compassion so briefly i will recap this so these are feelings which help us participate in the universal order uh, so perseverance means that we have the commitment for living in harmony at all four levels with patience bravery means that we have the commitment for helping the other to understand harmony and to live in harmony at all the four levels generosity means that we have the commitment to invest one's self body and physical facility for understanding and living in harmony at all these four levels so these are three values at the level of human being there are another three values kindness and that means providing means to one who has the ability but not the means beneficence means helping the other to develop the competence to utilize the means that they already have and compassion means helping the other unconditionally to develop the competence as well as the means to fulfill his needs when he neither has the ability nor the means so we had seen that education is an act of compassion because the student may not have the interest to understand the student may not also have the content to understand and we try to make both the available so it is an act of compassion so we had discussed about these six values i will not elaborate or illustrate upon them but this is the way we participate in the universal order as a human being now we can have a brief discussion over the participation of human being in different dimensions of human order and here we we'll make a brief presentation of it just to draw your attention towards them so that you can start exploring and when you have the next course we have before then we will be discussing all the dimensions in much more detail so these are various dimensions that we can study so the five dimensions that you studied earlier now they can be mapped onto these eight dimensions so education health justice production and service exchange and distribution right utilization preservation and various services which are administrative and social so these are eight dimensions so this is another kind of formulation that we can take for participation in the harmony in the society now talking about the dimension of education you see that education plays an important role in ensuring human order education builds the ability the competence or right understanding right thought and right behavior in every person it enables one to behave properly with others now talking about the dimensions of education and health we'll see that education plays an important role in ensuring human order it builds the ability the competence or right understanding right thought and right behavior in every person it enables one to behave properly with other human beings and work with mutual fulfillment with the rest of nature and thereby contribute to human order or system so this is something which is common to what we have discussed earlier so every human being has the innate potential to understand the desire to understand and education is a process which develop the right understanding right feeling right thought and also imbibe such skills which one can employ for producing the physical facilities which are required for fulfilling the needs of the body and all these 
is ultimately going to be enabled by education and hence it is a very important dimension of society if you look at the dimension of health then the achievement of this dimension can be seen in terms of health of the human body when this dimension is functioning well it will lead a life which is conducive to good health human being is positions of self and body this is something that we have explored earlier the satisfaction in the self is ensured by the dimension of education whereas health of the body is taken care of by the dimension of health when these two dimensions of education and health are ensured every individual is able to live as a human being and live with fulfillment with mutual fulfillment so dimension of health is also very important if i have to ensure the health of the body then i have to develop the feeling of self regulation in me and this understanding of self regulation is something that has to come from education but with this feeling of self regulation what programs i have to make that is something to be taken care of by the dimension of health and in any society if education and health are taken care of properly okay then you'll see that uh, the society naturally leads to a state of harmony of course this has to be complemented by other dimensions but right understanding in the self is going to be ensured by that dimension of education and the health in the body is going to be ensured by this dimension of health and this is something that we have discussed that the satisfaction in the self is ensured by dimension of education whereas the health of the body is taken care of by the dimension of health so talking about dimension of justice uh, we have seen earlier that justice essentially means that we are able to rightly recognize the feelings in the relationship which are mutually fulfilling which are naturally acceptable and when we are able to recognize such feelings then we are able to fulfill them we are able to also evaluate them rightly so that it leads to mutual happiness and the mark of justice is mutual happiness now we have systems of justice even today but mostly the systems of justice today are working to settle the feuds and the fights and the quarrels in place of that if you can have a system of justice in the society which is proactively working to develop the right feeling in the people then only there could be fearlessness and trust in the society so when a human being with a healthy self and healthy body is able to ensure fulfillment in relationships with other human beings justice is naturally ensured so this is ensuring recognition of relationship among the human beings its fulfillment through values leading to mutual happiness and practice of comprehensively abiding by this is known as system of justice so we have to devise such practices such ways and means by which we are able to imbibe such understanding such feeling in the people so that they are able to live together with happiness mutually people go to the courts of law only when there is a feud or there is dissatisfaction in the relationship there is unhappiness in the relationship so you'll see that a person goes to the court much later but the seeds of injustice are sown much earlier so if you are able to remove those seeds of injustice by ensuring the right feeling in the people the natural people will not have to go any court of law for justice so there would be another kind of role for justice system here and that would be a proactive role of ensuring harmony in every family of ensuring harmony among the families so we'll have to design such practices evolve such uh, means and there would be the role of science how to ensure mutual happiness in the family among families in such a way that people are able to live together uh people are able to coexist together so we have to see we have to develop the science of evolving such practices in the society and when justice is ensured trust and fearlessness is established within interpersonal relationship and in the systems so there is lot more to think about this how to ensure justice proactively how to ensure such a relationship in the society that people do not have to go to any court of law or to a police station with any grudges or complaints so think about this maybe you can take the case of a mohalla or a village and try to see how we can have such practices prevalent in the society so that people are naturally able to ensure justice so one common way that has been adopted traditionally is to have a common meeting together so it is required that in families also no we sit together almost every week at least it is so traditionally also we will see that we have developed such a practice of sitting together and discussing all these issues so in the family it is expected that the family members sit together 
at least for once in a week and discuss all their issues, discuss their concerns and their aspirations and try to reach a common conclusion, isn't it? Similarly, we can have such meetings in the villages, we can have such meetings even at higher levels of order in the society so that people are able to dialogue with each other, they are able to share their concerns. If that takes place, then the injustice naturally comes down in the society. Talking about the dimension of production and service, so the production ensures physical facility required for production of our physical needs. When we obtain as, what we obtain as outcome of labor on the rest of nature is known as production. So you'll see that in addition, we notice that there are certain activities which do not produce anything but are concerned with protection or maintenance. For example, washing of clothes is one such activity where there is no production but preservation or maintenance of existing items is there. So when it comes to the dimension of production and service, so we have to look at it in a holistic sense, producing what is required, preserving, protecting, uh, what is not to be produced but just to be protected and then rightly and then rightly utilizing every physical facility there would also be people who would be working for repair and maintenance and this is another kind of activity that will take place in the society it is not directly associated with manufacture of any item but with the protection or maintenance of existing ones because along with manufacturing of new items, there is also a need for protection or maintenance of items already produced. And activities of such kind are also known as service. So even today, you can see that there are so many uh, people who are working in the service sector. People who cut your hair, people who stitch their clothes, people who cut their hair, people who stitch the clothes, people who take care of the health of the body. So you'll see that in society today, already there are so many people working in the service sector. You know, somebody is cutting hair, somebody is stitching clothes, somebody is taking care of the cleanliness in the society. So their production is not taking place, but the maintenance is being done, the protection is being done. So this is another dimension which will be there in the society. Then the dimension of exchange will of course be there as we discussed earlier. So we do not produce every item that we use, nor we can perform every kind of service that we require. And hence we can produce only some of them. And then all other items are produced by others. And through exchange, all such items and services are made available to us as per our needs. So somebody is producing food grains, somebody is cutting hair, somebody is doing carpentry, somebody is rearing animals. And then people exchange the facilities among themselves so that they are able to fulfill their needs. But the bottom line is that the exchange system has to be mutually fulfilling. It does not have to be exploitative, isn't it? Similarly, the dimension of right utilization is there. So we need to elaborate on how to utilize rightly the things that we have obtained by virtue of production or exchange. And what is meant by right utilization also needs to be understood. A program needs to be made to ensure right utilization in the society. So as we discussed earlier, there are so many resources available in the society in abundance. And if you do not utilize them rightly, they will become scarce after some time. So there has to be some dimension of society where people will take care of the natural resources. So the river is flowing. How to ensure that the river continues to flow? There is a certain level of pollution in the air. How to contain that pollution of air? How to utilize the air rightly? how to utilize the forest rightly, how to utilize the food production rightly. So presently we can see that this kind of system is not so prevalent in the society today, but we have to take into account such practice also. And then the preservation that is security. So we need to preserve, that is enrich and protect the natural resources, which we utilize for production and exchange. And we look at this as preservation security. So presently we'll see that in the name of security, we make arrangements so that if there's some opposition with another part of the society, then we make arrangements for defense, we make arrangements for weapons, but this is not the actual uh, practice that would be required in the harmonious society. So essentially we have to ensure justice with human being and preservation with the rest of nature. So when you say security, ultimately it has to be ensured with the rest of nature. So there may be flood somewhere, there may be drought somewhere, okay? Somewhere there would be a storm which would have uh, devastated the houses in the colony. 
So there would be some dimension of the society which will take care of all this. And finally, the dimension of service. So that would be administrative service as well as social service. Now, by administrative service, we mean that in order that the system runs smoothly, it is essential to ensure the dimension of human order and to make sure that they are working properly. And this necessary function of ensuring that the systems are working properly is called as administrative service. So presently also we have the administrative system and of course it is functioning and we'll have to see what further improvisation has to be done so that this dimension of the society is able to cater to the real needs of the society. Again, in terms of social service, we'll see that despite the efforts to ensure the different social dimensions, certain shortcomings may remain and taking care of them through relationships is called as social service. So it may be the case that in spite of all the dimensions functioning properly, there may be certain loopholes, certain uh, inadequacies in the functioning of the system. There could be certain shortcomings. And then we need to evolve such dimension also in the society which can take care of such shortcomings. The service can be of two types. One which is ensured by the system, that is administrative system. And the second which is being provided to each other by the society with a feeling of relationship and that is the social service. So presently also we have these two services functioning and we have to develop some more humane models of having these services in place. So briefly going over all this, so we'll see that for the fulfillment of our goals and objectives, we need the dimensions of education, health, justice, production and service, exchange, right utilization, security and services. The services would include both administrative and social. So education and health take care of our physical and mental well-being. Justice takes care of the relationship. So education and health take care of our physical and mental well-being, as we discussed earlier. So with education, we are able to ensure the right understanding and right feeling. With the system of health, we are able to ensure that the parts of the body are working properly and the body is able to work as an instrument of the self. Justice takes care of the relationship in human interaction in such a way that mutual happiness is ensured in every relationship. So in place of people going to some court of law or police station because of some injustice, we have to develop such proactive models of justice so that there is no such case arising in the society. Similarly, production and service, exchange, right utilization and preservation, such measures, if you see, they ensure that our requirements of physical facility are taken care of properly, ensuring mutual fulfillment of the rest of nature. And we are able to complement the rest of nature also. So we do need physical facilities, but we have to fulfill the need for physical facility in such a way that the rest of nature is enriched, protected and rightly utilized. And this will be taken care of these systems. Now to enable these dimensions to function without failure, the dimension of service at the level of system is required. So this will be basically coordinating all these dimensions and there will be an administrative service which is going to coordinate this system and there would be a social service sector also which will take care of the shortcomings uh, which uh, may be possible in other dimensions of the society. So these are various dimensions of the society and this would help us obtain the human objectives and this would help us fulfill the human goals. Now we have seen that science in its broader term is defined as how to ensure fulfillment of the human goal, its thought, its expectation, detailing out of the plan, program, implementation, result and evaluation. And we saw that while discussing science, we have to talk about science of behavior, science of work and science of participation. However, if you look at the present day science, it is not paying much attention to the science of behavior and science of participation in larger order. Now, if you evaluate the present state of science, so we have seen that science in its broader term is defined as how to ensure the fulfillment of the human goal. Uh, so what would be the thought processes, evaluation involved there? What would be the expectation there? And then we can detail out the plan, program, implementation, result and evaluation there. And as you said earlier, that science would include science of behavior, science of work and science of participation in the larger order. Now, if you look at the present state of science, you'll see that it is not paying much attention to science of behavior and science of participation in the larger order. Even if there is some effort, it is mostly scattered. And even whole dealing with science of work, its approach is quite limited as we discussed in this session only. So we need to broaden the scope of science, isn't it? 
So the present day science mostly we'll see is focused on how to add to the production, how to add to consumption, how to maximize the profit and things like this. So we have to make it humane. So that would be possible only when we are able to include consciousness and space as realities of concern. So we have to study about the consciousness also in the present day science. We have to study about space also. And we have to include the study of relationship, harmony and coexistence at the level of all these realities of existence as a whole. So the human aspect has to be taken care of. Even the analysts today are saying that if the science is mostly focused on physical facilities, then the society is not going to get a good shape. So the human aspect has to be taken care of. If you see with this concern only, the subjects of humanities by introducing technical courses, isn't it? So that people are exposed to the uh, thought pattern of a human being. They are able to expose to some understanding of relationship of behavior. So we have to include this also as a part of science and then only our science can be fulfilling to the society. Then only the science can further lead to a state where the society could be undivided. The order could be there universally. There could be universal human order in the society. So we need to work a lot in terms of science, isn't it? But that is possible only when we have the clarity about the right understanding. We have the clarity about the human goal. If you have no clarity about the human goal, then of course our science is going to be misleading. So with right understanding comes wisdom. With wisdom comes science. Now in the current day science, we have missed out on the part of right understanding and wisdom. And we are just trying to deal with science of work. And there also we do not have a proper vision. And that's why people are wondering how many years this earth is going to survive. If you look at the state of wars among nations, if you look at the destruction of natural resources, if you look at the way profit maximization has taken to the fore, then uh, it is really being felt that the society cannot be sustainable going this way, isn't it? Now we have some homework for you here as we have been taking homework in every lecture. So we have seen that science can be expanded as science of behavior, science of work and science of participation. So in the present day science, are we taking care of all three or only the science of work and what all aspects are included there in the science of work also? Are we able to take care of the preservation of nature? Are we able to take care of the justice while working together? So only the science of work in only some limited aspects of it. So this is something that you have to make out. Now in the science of participation, what do you see as your role at different levels, right from family order to the nation, to the world family order? So is your role only going to be limited to get a good job, a handsome salary, and if possible, no work? Is that so? Or is it something going to be in terms of ensuring your participation in the universal human order? So does the present day education system prepare you for these roles or not? You have to evaluate this for yourself and note it down. And if not, then what change is required in the present education system? So try to work it out. There's something for you to explore, something to investigate within. And then you'll see that your whole imagination starts getting transformed when you start thinking in these terms. So today we talked about the science of work and science of participation in larger order. And we saw that there's so much of a scope to work in terms of work and participation. The present day science is not able to take care of the human aspect properly. So we are not able to ensure justice in our relationship. We are also not able to ensure mutual fulfillment with the rest of nature. And that's how we have to take it very seriously. And we have to evolve such plans, programs, implementation strategies, uh, evaluation techniques, so that we are able to develop the right kind of science to have mutually fulfilling relationship with the human being as well as the rest of nature. So this is something that we discussed in the lecture today. Thank you.